know when you're little and you see grown-ups using all the equipment and it's like that looks so cool like you you see like the grown-ups with like the 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 delivery trolley or or like you know the blender or all those things you're not supposed to touch when you're little and you're thinking that's the coolest f-ing thing ever that looks like so much fun why can't i use that i want to get on the riding it's, mower actually the riding motor is kind of fun let's be honest it's right. not fun The pressure washer looks like a lot of fun. Come on, that is fun. It actually is not. It is. It's so satisfying. It really isn't. All right, because uh, our roof has got a white coating on it. It's to help reflect, you know, the sun. Also, we have heat. a small, yeah, he, we have a small leak from the last tropical storm that I've got to find and, and patch it. But... One of the things that's happened Please with coating is... You, with a leak, you decided to run out and run pressurized water on your no, roof. No, no, no. Okay. The roof over Lord time, for a minute there. over the years of it being up there, well, it doesn't stay white. There's like this layer of grime on it, which if you need it to be white to reflect the rays of the sun, it's not working so good. So... Um, and this is even more disconcerting. Um, when you get the layer wet, it goes from brown to so- or black to this sort of really dark burgundy, which means that it's not just dirt. That's mold and mildew up there. That's terrible. Tootsie fruitsie. I was thinking blood. No. If 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 my roof was I'm covered just, with you blood. You have feral be- cats that you have seen get up there, so some of it is blood. If it... <laughs> If my roof is covered with blood, I'd be having I'd be having some other problems. But uh, so that has got to get cleaned off. So I have a very cheap little pressure washer, which. Fun trying to get pressure washer plus hose plus electricity up onto the roof because it only goes up a ladder. And look at me. I'm not very good with ladder. I'm I'm just not. Um. So I've been up there. I was using the pressure washer. And let me tell you, there's a there's a video game called Pressure Washer Simulator. And everybody's like, this is so relaxing. And it looks like a lot of fun. Let me tell you something. It's not. It's irritating. Because here's what you're cleaning the roof. Here's what I'm looking like. I do this for hours on end. Just moving my arm up and down and staring down like this. And you know what? This for some damn reason, hurts your back. Yeah. Looking down, which seems they're really starting dumb. To say that, like, they're, they're, they're starting to speculate that in like 50 years, humans will actually develop a hump right here from looking down at our phones so much. Well, that's not true. Have you seen that sketch of like what humans will look like as we evolve? It's pretty bad. It's like the Ikea guy, but a hun- but with a hump. That's That's not true. See, I've all, I pressure wash like my front porch, and that is very fun and satisfying. There's just it's it's just it is it because I'm just standing there staring down and going back and forth, and back and forth, and it's just it's really. Also, I had to learn the nozzles. The nozzle. I had to learn the different nozzles. Like mm. it's really wild. There's like this weak ass nozzle that's like if you're supposed to be using soap or something. You use that nozzle. And then there's like a medium nozzle. It's called like the 15 degree nozzle. And that's like, if you want to use, use this on your house or on the gutters. And then there's the turbo nozzle. And the turbo nozzle, that'll cut your foot off. Each week, gathering the Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring it back here for the segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And there was a saying once before before photoshop and and deep fakes and ai and that saying was a picture is worth a thousand words this week we've got a picture that is definitely worth a thousand words i'm trying to start off with just the picture because it's amazing 
It's like, how the hell did that happen? The chat really happen? wants you to know that the counting rice thing is vampires, not Fey. Well, vampires, Fey, same thing. I see. Next week, you guys, when Nash seems a little weird, it's because he got replaced by a fetch for saying that shit. So, yeah, here's the picture. That's amazing, right? Let's see if I can just get the picture on another. Let's see if I can get the uh, picture on another. Can I not just open this? Oh, well. That's kind of, uh, come on, I just, yeah, I sent it to you, right? Yeah, but I don't see a picture. Scroll down a little. <gasps> oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, you go, oh, wow. Look at that. Look at that shit. There we go. That's a better shot. What right is that there. <laughs> Driver charged after tractor trailer crashes into interstate exit sign. Enrico County, Virginia. No. Driver's driver's been charged with uh, reckless driving after crashing their tractor trailer into a sign on Interstate 64 West. All lines, well, the lanes in the area have been closed most of the day. Uh, Virginia Department of Transportation reported the left travel lane had been reopened. The bed of a tractor trailer struck an overhead sign in the area. The bed then separated from the cab with the tractor trailer remaining upright against the sign. It's removed from the sign around 11 a.m. in the morning. There was nothing in the bed of the tractor trailer. Um, no injuries reported. While police were initially reported the crash was under investigation, the driver of the tractor trailer, identified as 62-year-old Richard D. Houston of the Lorton area of Fairfax County, has been charged with reckless driving. How the fuck do you do this? It sounds like the truck was too tall. No, no, no. The truck was not too tall. There's no, no too tall the there. It says the bed of the truck hit the sign. Yes, but how? Right, like looking at the picture, that doesn't work because the truck is only this tall. Yeah, what Unless happened? Whatever that big stick thing is was sticking up from. <sighs> I think what happened is you're supposed to attach that thing with like, and someone who's a trucker can correct me on this. You're supposed to attach that thing with like pneumatics and you have to clamp it down and it connects to the if it wasn't quite attached it might have just it only has wheels on the back so, so it just got excited the wheel. yeah it just <laughs> it's carrying a load of viagra um people no, what the, the problem with this wasn't just the fact that he took out the sign which is impressive this was like, you can't help but rubberneck. Even if yeah. you're the safest driver in the world, when are you, you ever going to see shit? When are you ever going to see this again? When? Hopefully never. Because part of this is you're going to look over and you're going to go, how the fuck? You're going to, oh, you're just going to spend like, you'll be like, how in the entire fuck did this happen? This is like I was in you the know, car with a friend a couple weeks ago and we were driving and there was a really bad accident on the other side of the highway. And the, like. I say really bad accident because before we even got to the accident, there were three fire trucks and two ambulances. So like, you know, but then I saw that one car was up on its side and one of the tires, you know, like usually mm -hmm. the bottom of your car goes like this and the tire goes like this. Right. Right. The car was up like this. And the tire was like that. Oh, your axle done like, fucked. And like the tire and the tire was also flush to the bottom of the car. Oh, that's yeah. They got his, his hover conversion got stuck is the problem. He's going to take that. The, the, and we were the, just the like, shop how does that happen? Like I under, I've had a cracked axle. Yeah, sure. That happens. The tire, though, pretty much stayed perpendicular to the bottom of the car like this went like this. Like this, this looks like uh, like the physics engine in a Bethesda game lost its shit. Yeah. It's like you're trying to play I fucking bet you can do that in Grand Theft Auto. Oh, yeah, you can definitely do that in Grand Theft Auto. Somebody try this in Grand Theft Auto and get back to us. You can definitely do, do that, Grant. Or what's you that other game could. you like with the dick bat? 
It's not a game. Uh, Sa- Saints Row, and I don't play Saints yeah. Row, but Sa- oh. Saints Row. I bet you could do it in that game because that's you a driving that. game, right? Yeah. All right, Terry, you're on the TikTok much more than me. Um, I am. Did you know this is actually fucking magic? I'll say this, to everybody at home. Did you know that if you are a Chase Bank customer? And you take a check and deposit it electronically with your phone. You can take that. You you can write yourself a check. You can take that money out of your own account. It will credit you for whatever you write the check for. And you can instantly take that money out of your account. It's free money, Tara. Oh, oh, because I was like, that's generally how a checking account works yes but you don't have to ha- oh they or like you know what, what what we've called it many times in the past bank fraud cuz USAA like they spot me $100 until the rest of the check clears when i do that well Chase was actually a bank was actually being decent to its customers. They were letting you withdraw based on depositing your check. Um, and look what look what happens. Look, look what happens. Viral money hack made its rounds on TikTok claiming you can get extra money from an ATM if you actually have a Chase bank account. If you fell for the scam, it's actually fraud and Chase will be removing the money from your account. People were able to write checks themselves and deposit them at ATMs. Uh, The glitch allowed people to access the money immediately, letting them withdraw the funds before the bank could identify the error. Typically, you can't withdraw money until the bank verifies the check is legit, which can take a few days. It's not only a bad idea, it's actually illegal. We're aware of this incident. It's been addressed, Chase Chase spokesperson said. Regardless of what you see online, depositing a fraudulent check and withdrawing the funds from your account is fraud, plain and simple. People who participated may have enjoyed the extra money. The bank quickly caught on and started correcting balances. When the glitch was fixed, the checks bounced and customers saw negative balances. The end result was inevitable. Uh, it's tempting to try and keep the money. However, banks have systems in place to catch these type of uh, errors. Uh, Alania, Alania Fingal, member of CNET's expert review board, said, uh, I may take them a few days or possibly even a few weeks, but they will realize the error and reverse the deposit. So TikTok discovered you could do this and thought it was magic. And people started doing this. A lot of people. And... Turns out it wasn't magic. It was simply crime. I'm choosing to believe that the people that did this understood that this was theft and were just trying to fuck the system or something. Because I cannot sleep at night realizing that that many people don't know that the bank's just not going to give you free money. There were TikToks of people looking at their accounts with the negative balance being like, bruh, one dude had a negative $10,000 balance in his fucking account. (laughs) Just like, bruh. Like, people can't be that dumb, right? Like, or I should say that (laughs) many people can't be that dumb, right? (laughs) Like, we know people are that dumb, but it can't be that many, right? Because, like, how yeah. Would society function if people were that dumb? Well, Tara, it doesn't usually. Yeah. But Most of like, our society works on accident. Like if you're if you're really thinking the bank will just give me this money because I say I have it, and then no consequences. Should you be out without a chaperone? I think part of this is we have a bunch of uh, a generation, I think at least gen, uh, gen Z, millenniums and millennials and gen, maybe millennials, but definitely Gen Z onward. Not really familiar with how paper checks work. You don't have to be. All you have to know is that if you don't have the money 
the bank's not going to just give it to you for free. Well, yeah, but people are like, I have to, if you've never actually used paper checks, you probably look at those that they're, they're kind of like magic, weirdly enough. You just like Bell write Bell something. Check. Yeah. It's like, it's like nobody's, you remember Catch, Catch Me If You Can, Leonardo DiCaprio? The numbers on the check mean things, if you didn't understand yeah. that. But yeah, there are people filming themselves doing this shit. Like, I, 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 I use checks. I still use checks See, for I one purpose. I would expect younger people to be more savvy because younger people have grown up entirely in a world in which money is decreasingly real. Like, the younger you are, the less likely you are to have cash because society has, is veering away from cash. So I would expect younger people to be more savvy to this. Well, I, I used, used to... I all, use checks all for their one money being imaginary. Well, I use checks for one purpose. I we pay our, our the kid who mows our lawn with a check. That way I can keep track of it in my bank. That's it. Cuz yeah, cash is one thing, but it it's just if I kept pulling out cash just it wouldn't show up in my it helps me stay organized. Shut up. Um but yeah, it's, th there are people I th people who were born after a certain point have never even owned a damn checkbook. That it, it it's 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 like black magic to them how you just you you write on paper and it becomes money how does that happen we're fucked dude speaking of we're fucked like the uh, chat's real mad at me and i'm not saying i didn't realize people are stupid because i've worked retail <laughs> okay i didn't realize this many people were this stupid and that's deeply upsetting well it's tiktok so they're stupid together that makes them stronger as idiots you know you started this whole thing saying i'm on tiktok a lot <laughs> hey people are stupid on all the social medias it's just tiktok makes it a lot easier for them to to, to get video uh, very quickly together okay so speaking of uh yeah, um, you mentioned last week you're you're getting rid of Dan's old guns and you you got them stored. He's got a got a gun safe. I take it right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a good place to store guns. You know what's not a good place to store guns? Almost anywhere else. I think I've I, I've narrowed it down a little bit more than that. Um. Oven destroyed after Chesterfield resident puts loaded gun inside, turns it on. An oven in a Chesterfield County home was destroyed Thursday night after uh, oh fire officials say, picture. I'll show them. Yeah. After fire officials say a resident put a loaded gun inside and turned it on, causing the gun to fire off multiple shots. Yeah. Look at the picture. The guns actually melted. That's kind of impressive. Like not the metal part, but the other parts, the plastic bits. On Thursday, uh, firefighters with Chesterfield County Fire and EMS responded to a Chesterfield home for, for a report of an oven explosion. When they arrived, firefighters examined the oven and found a handgun inside. A photo from the scene appears to show it partially melted to one of the oven's racks. According to the officials, someone placed the loaded gun in the oven and turned it on. When the gun heated off, it sh heated up. It shot off. It went off, shooting a total of five rounds. No one was injured. Fire officials had to make this statement: When you place any item in the oven, it's easy to forget it's there, which can lead to a fire or something worse when you turn it on. You should make sure you properly store your firearms. Keep them someplace secure. Like a gun safe. I love how the fire department's trying to make this off like, this is something you should be aware of. Please don't store your guns in the oven. Like a public service announcement. Guns should be stored in a gun safe, not I the don't oven. Even, I, I used to freak out that Dan used to store his cast iron skillet in the oven. <laughs> not because anything bad was going to happen, 
But like once in a while, I'll put the cookie sheet in the oven just to get it out of the way. But then inevitably, I want to use the cookie sheet and I forget that I've put yeah. it in the oven. And by the time I remember, I've already preheated the oven. So now and I have to put the, on yeah. the damn oven gloves to get the cookie sheet out. It's just well, I, so I can't like and that's things that are made to go in an oven. It's like that, but a gun. Right. Who among us has it at some point? Pretty much everybody, actually. Pretty pretty much fucking everybody. Do you all know how gunpowder works? <laughs> Do you know how a gun works? Like, I don't know a lot about guns, but I know that the basic mechanism is a little thing makes a spark and that heats up the boomy powder and that propels the death thing. <laughs> well, when and a I'm bullet... A fucking the- moron when it comes to guns. When a bullet and a gun love each other very much, that's how gunpowder works, right? That's that's how that works. It, did like you watch season three of Twin Peaks? I did not. Oh, you should. Or at least I haven't in the ages. Very, the very last episode. Well, no, like the, the season three that they did in 2017. Yeah, I got a certain point in that and I'm just like, what the fuck is this shit? I, I got okay. to, I got to, I got to, I, I think I got to the point where Michael Sarah showed up pretending to be Marlon Brando. And I'm just mm. like, what? I, I that's, I, that's so about where I get checked. to the one with the nuke? Nope. I, I think I checked out at Michael Sarah. I, I checked because I was just like nine inch nails in the nuke. Damn. It was annoying anyway. the living crap out of me. That sequence was annoying. The very last episode, Agent Cooper is in a diner and he takes a gun off a guy and he decides to dispose of the gun by dropping it in the deep fryer. But before that, he tells everybody back away. I don't know if it's loaded. (laughs) Even then, that was a bad idea. I don't know why he did that. Agent Cooper is usually smarter than that. But there's a lot of questions about that finale. You mean Dougie? Anyway, um, he wasn't Dougie anymore by then. All right, next up, this, okay. Ships at sea. Have you ever, have you ever played Battleship? You know, the, 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 you sunk my Battleship, D7, D8? No. Really? Wow. The whole basis of that game is you and I your opponent. I grew up in a household where we had a board game by the Irish Tourist Board, where the objective of the game was to tour Ireland. OK, no, I have never played Battleship. The, the point of Battleship is you have two different screens set up and you have to guess where you're going to shoot the other people's boats. But you don't know where the boats are. And that's how it works. The boats are right. not supposed to be in real life. The boats are not supposed to be easy to find. Unless, of course. You really want to keep up with the sports scores at home. So you set up a fucking Wi-Fi router. Oh, this isn't for a game of Battleship. No, no, this is the really real one. Today's Navy sailors are likely familiar with the jarring loss of Internet connect- connectivity that can come with the ship's deployment. For a variety of reasons, including operational security, a crew's Internet access is regularly restricted while underway to preserve bandwidth for the mission and to keep their ships safe from nefarious online attacks. But the senior enlisted leaders among the literal uh, combat ship Manchester's Gold crew knew no such privation last year. But they installed and secretly used their very own Wi-Fi network during a deployment. As the ship prepared for a West Pacific deployment in April 2023, the enlisted leaders on board conspired with the ship's chiefs to install the secret unauthorized network aboard the ship's for exclusive use exclusively by them. So while rank and file uh, sailors live without the level of internet con- connectivity they enjoyed ashore, the chiefs installed a Starlink satellite internet dish on top of the ship and used a Wi-Fi network they dubbed Stinky to check sports you use scores. Elons. Yeah. To check sports scores, text home, and stream movies. The enjoyment of those wireless creature comforts by enlisted leaders aboard the ship carried serious repercussions for the security of the ship and its crew. 
The danger such system posed the ship, uh, the crew, the, and the Navy cannot be understated, the investigation notes. Led by the senior enlisted leaders of the ship's gold crew, then command uh, senior chief Grizel Marrero? Marrero? I Marrero. think it's Marrero. Grizel? Am I saying that right? Grizel? Grizel Marrero? It's a cool name. Uh, the effort roped in the entire chief's mess by the time it was uncovered a few minutes later. Uh, Marrero was re uh, relieved in late 2023 after repeatedly misleading and lying to her ship's command about the Wi-Fi network. As she was uh, convicted at court martial this spring, connection to the scheme, she was sentenced to a reduction in rank to E7 after the trial. It's not responding to requests for comments to this report. Here's the thing. I, yeah. I don't know if it's the same in the Navy. In the Army, as Dan explained it to me, enlisted, mm -hmm. even if you're like a high rank enlisted, you're still a grunt. You're not an officer. So even if you're a leader enlisted, you're still a grunt. Which means you're fucked. Officers, though, they might protect a little bit. Enlisted, they could give a fuck, dude. You're cannon fodder. Why? I just. OK, you, I love that they thought they were sneaky and shit. To be able to do this, except, you know, with a typical Wi-Fi network, I know a bunch of the tech geeks on here, but like, well, you don't always have to. But a typical Wi-Fi network broadcasts its name to anyone yeah. nearby that has a wireless device. Now, you can shut that off. It's the SSID. But yes, I know techies. I know. I mean, if you're in but the middle of the ocean, no one's nearby. See, that's the thing, though. You can damn near confirm where the fucking boat is. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's an SSID yeah. broadcasting and Starlink. You can track those. You can track the Starlink that they're having that problem in in Ukraine and with with the with you can track these Starlink satellite links. Also, you put a giant satellite dish on top of the ship. Yeah, that's kind of. I wonder. However, it's funny. I wonder how long before the officers realize. Uh, Dave, yeah. How many things do we have on top of this thing? Five. Are <laughs> you sure it's do? five? What does that one do? Uh, I don't know. Is that one new? I don't know. I wonder how, if they just they got away with it so long because none of the officers wanted to admit they didn't know what the fuck that one was for. <laughs> yeah, the, the person who asked probably got told you're not a high enough rank to ask that question. <laughs> That's classified. What does that do, man? <laughs> uh, we're moving but on to yeah, Vegas for this uh, one. Whew. Okay, we're moving on to Vegas for this next one because, my God, I, I'm often reminded of that old meme. Uh, you, you may be fucked up, but you've never been Johnny Cash eating a cake in a bush fucked up, right? That was a fun old meme. I enjoyed that one. Um, this one I enjoy considerably less, um, because what in the entire fuck did happen to you that night? What in the entire fuck? Drunk Las Vegas woman stole coffin with body from, from funeral home. On August 27th, uh, Patricia Sierra, 47, broke into the affordable cremation and burial funeral home. Uh, and stole a coffin containing a human body. Surveillance footage showed Look, I the know woman. The standards for getting married in Vegas are a little lower than most places, but I don't think that's going to work. <laughs> Got a weekend at Bernie's, that shit. Mm. Uh, surveillance footage showed the woman breaking through a window and unlocking the front door before proceeding to enter the property's viewing room and wheel a coffin outside. Sierra apparently dumped the body outside the funeral home. After that, she left the coffin as well and fled the crime scene. At around 3.30 a.m., 911 received a report of a body lying in front of affordable cremation and burial, which has got to be disconcerting as fuck. Because you, you, we're back to David Lynch. You know the, the opening of Blue Velvet? Guy's walking along, looks over. Hey, there's an ear in a field. That's really weird. Well, here's a whole dude in a field. Just whole body. The whole man. 
That's got to be a little disconcerting. <laughs> Authorities rushed to the scene, identified the deceased remains. They learned that a body had arrived at the funeral home on August 20th, had a viewing day before being stolen and thrown outside. Sierra admitted that the woman's surveillance footage was her, but said she had no memories of the accident. She told police she had drank. <laughs> yeah, I know. She told police she had drank six beers. And an alcohol often makes her black out. And they use the word accident again. Yeah. I don't that. think you know what that word means. Give me the Inigo Montoya. I keep using that word. Sierra apologized for the incident, emphasizing it had not been prompted by malice. Despite that, the woman faces charges of burglary, grand larceny, and disturbing human remains. At the time of this writing, she remains in custody with her bail set at $11,000. Oh, well, Six she said she's sorry. Six beers, though. Six beers. One six pack. And you're fucked. That's 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 the that is the good Lord telling you to not drink. Straight up. Don't worry now, is, though, because the ghost that will haunt you for the rest of your life will also remind you to not drink. It's like fucking American werewolf in London. You got a corpse behind you giving you shit all the time. I just, the fuck? Hey, bitch, remember that time you got drunk and desecrated my body? Yeah, also, what is the chain of logic? Even drunk what logic. Here? Yeah, what got you from point A to point dumping a body in front of a burial home? What? That you stole. He was like, okay, I'm going to here. I'm getting the body. I don't want the body. I just want the box. Actually, I don't want the box. I don't need the box anymore. I'm going home. I mean, they're heavier than they look. They are, yes. This, good God almighty. This is the weirdest case of drunk brain I've ever heard of in my life. Six beers. Six. Like, I'm a lightweight. But Jesus. Like, at six beers, I'm a little sleepy. That's six beers. I'm not... I don't even know if I could drink six beers because I dislike the taste of beer so much yeah. that I can usually do like a beer before I'm like, all right, give me anything else. It's just like I at, at six, I, I could not even also, process. Also, beer is really fucking acidic, man. Yeah. I hope you ate something. That's what you're thinking about right now. Yeah. Because that's my other problem. I have that one beer and then I feel like my stomach's on fire because it's super acidic. <sighs> you all didn't need to know that about me, but there we are. There we are. All right. We got uh, one more for us this week. This one, we got video. Um, points for the old college try, I guess I'll say. You, 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 you tried something. It didn't work, but you tried it. Um, however, points deducted. Because it was incredibly fucking stupid. Let's get the video on here. All right. If you're watching here, um, call about a suspicious vehicle ended with a Ford Bronco sitting atop a Peel police cruiser at a Tim Hortons. Oh. <laughs> Peel police say they received a call at 6.30 p.m. And an, oh, shit. There it goes. Well, um... Didn't quite work out. Didn't. Did not quite work. Okay. Oh, oh no. Oh, that's a crunchy noise. Oh my God. <laughs> People, police say they received a call around 6.30 p.m. from an individual who was concerned about a person in the area of Westwood Square shop, uh, Shopping Mall. Man allegedly stolen items from a store a couple of weeks ago and returned with weapons. Police located the vehicle and determined it had been stolen. 
Officers surrounded the stolen vehicle, and a number of cruisers were then damaged. Video circulating on social media shows the large red and black Bronco sitting atop the cruiser. In the video, uh, police arrived to box in the vehicle at what appears to be a drive through window. Driver initially tries to reverse, but sees that he cannot back away. The officer then gets out of the vehicle and points a gun at the driver and instructs the driver to you know, get out. Normally, when they've got the gun out, that's the time you stop. That's that's yeah. the time when the, the, it game over. After a moment, the video is seen accelerating forward and attempting to go over the police cruiser to escape. However, the vehicle is unable to fully mount the cruiser. I love the phrasing yeah. there. And eventually backs off, revealing a shattered front window on the cruiser. See it unfold. Do you also warning. notice the cop that was in the driver's seat having to roll out of that car last minute like <laughs> fucking Dukes of Hazard? Yep. Oh. Uh, what what in the it, It's a Ford Bronco? It's a Bronco. I know it's a large vehicle, but it's still a Ford Bronco. You it's are not, not a Bigfoot. I don't even know what would do that. Monster truck. You're not a monster yeah. truck. Because you're a Bronco. Bronco is not a monster truck. Similar. I can understand. This. They're both trucks. So it's similar. I get that. But the difference is but, one but of them bigger. has wheels the size of an elephant. And the other one is your shitty little Bronco that you stole. Yeah. Which has wheels a little under the size of about, it's about the size of you have a torso a little bit. Yeah. Tire swing sort of thing. This is how majors are born. <laughs> Rewin said that. Rewin in the channel. This is how majors are born. Yeah. Mount the cruiser. I love the the vehicle you know, is actually, unable to fully said, mount the cruiser. Wasn't it? Isn't there like a weird piece of trivia that the Cars universe is supposed to take place in like a post apocalyptic world where all the humans are gone and cars are sentient? Yeah. It, yeah. Except you know. So like it's literally dumb. yes. Yes, except you know, it's 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 very dumb. I I I, I gotta tell you, I try It's a to movie about sentient cars for four year olds, so I try to be chill as a geek as an adult. I try to be chill. I'm like, ah, it's for fucking kids. It's you know, kids this fucking kid show. Like Toy Story. I'm not sitting there dissecting, well, wait a minute. They could have just stopped Sid if they... I'm not... It's fucking a kid. But the whole thing of cars, I'm sitting there the whole time just like... Wait a minute. How the... F why are their eyes the fucking windshield and not the... How the... Yeah. How yeah. is the... Like the whole time I'm just sitting there in my brain trying to make it work and it doesn't. I hate what it. What I found more upsetting, as I recall, there's like a, a demolition derby at some point. And if the cars are all alive and sentient. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much a dome. That's a gladiatorial pit. Yeah. The cars, the cars are. Uh... And these are movies for children. That I found upsetting. I was like, so some of the cars are going to die. Yeah. I it's just, not okay. It, I mean, he was like, I can understand being like, fuck it. But you there's don't a be fuck it. Car. Oh, there's a Pope car in the Cars universe. So wait, yeah. does like the Pope mobile become the Pope? Yeah. Yeah, this is a picture that of it. Doesn't in seem like a qualification. The guy used to ride around on my head, so I'm religious leader now. Yeah, that's that's how that that's works. That's pretty thin. See, see what I'm telling you? It it kind of <laughs> just it it's like God damn it! Every you think about it for more than five seconds, and you're like, God damn it! I hate this. Yeah. Anyway, like I can appreciate you're trying to find a creative way out of the situation. Fair enough, but. 
even Canadian cops will shoot your ass. Yeah. They'll probably say, sorry, sorry. I'll probably say that a lot, but they will shoot your ass. Freeze, eh? Oh, yeah, freeze here. Well, you loser. You know, I just, mean, if you try to run them over. They don't like that. They're going to get a upset. That. And they have guns. Just the fuck. Like, th- there is, I might as well go for it, but not when you're a ah, fucking idiot. The police tased the suspect when he eventually climbed out of the pasture size window and officers then tackled him. See, now there's your difference between Canadian cops and American cops. Yeah. Yeah. You try to motherfucking kill them and they just tase you. Sorry. Sorry, eh? Well, they're already out of Tim Hortons, so they're probably in a pretty good mood. You know, they can fill out their paperwork. They can fill out their paperwork and get a bag of donut holes at the same time. So it's 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 a win win. It's a nice afternoon for them. Wait, the Pope Uh, Mobile rides in a bigger Pope Mobile? Yeah. Why? Do you see? Do you see? The, so the Pope Mobile, which is a car, rides in a bigger Pope Mobile. I'm like that motherfucker in Event Horizon. Do you see? Are you appreciating this? There's a this? car? There is, yes. It's a Bentley. She's a Bentley. I only saw the first one. These movies got weird. Got weird. <laughs> anyway, I mean, the first, first thing we were Pope. But we're the first thing we didn't intend to learn this much about cars tonight. But the first thing we learned Are this cars week is Catholic. <laughs> we should just keep going. I told you. Do you see? Which this suggests is the existence of Amish cars. <laughs> Which doesn't even work. <laughs> this is the whole rest of the show, folks. This is the whole rest of the fucking show. This is all very, very concerning. I told you. All right. So the first thing we learned this week is um, trucks are not monster trucks. Mm-mm. Very, very simple there. We have learned that if you black out after six beers, don't drink. That's that's maybe just stop at one. Maybe Beer just not. sucks anyway. You're you're just determined to get get comments. However, comments are engagement. So, yeah, keep saying beer sucks. People will get pissed. Um, they got real mad at me when I said that last time. Uh, we have learned that. Uh, don't hide Wi-Fi on a warship. It's a little treacherous, shall we say. It is basically a beacon that says we are here. We have learned guns do not go in the oven. And if you needed to know that guns do not go in the oven, you probably shouldn't own a gun. And yet you do. Um. Yeah. We've learned that if you come across what seems like a trick that's too good to be true, it's probably bank fraud. Banks are not charities, guys. And finally, this week, we've learned that sometimes a fucking tractor trailer trailer can pop a wheelie and knock down a sign and you will be baffled as to the mechanics of this for the rest of your life. There's no video of it either. There's just pictures of it after it happened. They did not catch it on video. So it's going to forever be a mystery. This is why we need the Mythbusters back. Do you think they got the Pope car to give it last rites? (laughs) 